As a part of this worship service, we will have a time to reflect and participate in the sacrament that our Lord Jesus has given to his people. Please have ready some bread and some wine or grape juice for this time to reflect and to remember. Hello and welcome to worship. This is a celebration of the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. A couple of announcements that I would like to share with you. Um, first off, uh, just a reminder that we are having a meal on Wednesday evenings that starts at 5.30 and then following the meal we have a variety uh, of learning opportunities and fellowship opportunities for all ages. And so if uh, you are able to make that, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, but it's also um, a way, a means of continuing to uh, grow in our faith and our love toward God and toward each other. Um, in speaking of that, I, I ask that you keep uh, Harriet Cowie in prayer. Uh, she was our organist for many, many years, uh, probably 25 plus. Um, she's been battling cancer. She took a fall yesterday, broke her shoulder, and is uh, going to have a, a long uh, recovery. So please, please keep her and the family in prayer. Um, let's see, then also just a reminder, Bible study is happening um, on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Um, and then uh, just at a couple other things that will be happening in, in the near future, just a reminder that we will have a blessing of the animals on September 30th. Um, that's a Saturday. So if you need a, one of your pets or all of your pets, if you'd like for them to receive a blessing and be a part of a worship service outside, we encourage you to, uh, to make that. It's a, it's a great service. It's a unique and awesome service. And so with that, um, I just ask that you uh, keep us in prayer, keep the congregation in prayer, and we keep you in prayer, and we just keep these prayers going, uh, keeping us united in the spirit of Christ our Lord, in whose name we do give thanks and praise each and every day of our lives. And uh, with that, we're now going to move into worship. God bless you, and God bless your week. It is such a blessing to live our lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now observe a moment of silence for reflection and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are held captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to us the entire forgiveness of all of our sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rest. 
let us now join our hearts and our minds in the words for the prayer of the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Together we pray, Almighty and Eternal Lord, you know our problems and our weaknesses better than we ourselves. In your love and by your power, help us in our confusion and in spite of our weakness, make us firm in faith through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson for this 15th Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel. It is the 33rd chapter, verses 7 through 11. What we hear in these words today is that God has appointed Ezekiel in his prophetic office at this point to uh, be a sentinel. In other words, a sentinel was one who was sort of like stood on the watchtower and announced uh, coming danger, impending danger coming um, to get people ready. And so here uh, the Lord has, has put Ezekiel as a sentinel for God's people. Um, in other words, um, there's trouble pending and you need, you need to inform uh, my people that trouble's coming upon them. And, and, and if, if you don't, uh, that trouble's going to come and, and, and that blood's going to be on you. But if you do profess and do proclaim the trouble that's coming uh, because of your sin, because of your broken covenant living, um, when you warn and, and, and let them know that impending danger is coming upon them, uh, if they don't listen, then it's on them. Um, the whole purpose here for, for this, this uh, warning of impending danger uh, comes out of God's love. Uh, the, the punishment that is coming upon God's people is not one that is a punitive measure, uh, but is, is a measure, a vehicle uh, for, for, for restoration, for repentance, so that, so that God may restore. Uh, this is what we hear in God's words. Um, he, he wants to restore to right relationship those people whom he loves and who he cares about. And so with that, we hear this lesson. So you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh heavy upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from the ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? This ends our first lesson. Our gospel lesson for this day comes to us from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, it's the 18th chapter verses 15 through 20. Um, Jesus is speaking again to his apostles, his disciples, those who are gathered, um, who want to learn, who are, are forming and forging this new covenant people. Um, and, and here um, the Lord is providing for them insights into how to conduct themselves as a body, as a community. Uh, and when someone amongst that body in, in, in that community is, is um, heading for danger, walking a dangerous path, walking a path that only brings danger upon the lives of, of themselves and their loved ones, um, how do you uh, uh, allow for repentance and restoration of that one? And we hear that in this lesson. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, 
tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Hello, welcome to the children's message. Uh, today, I hope you heard our lesson, our gospel lesson. It's sort of a tough one. Um, and let me help uh, you sort of get an understanding of what Jesus is trying to say here. Uh, maybe, maybe you've seen this in a movie, or maybe it's happened to you. Uh, let's say you're, you're watching your, your little brother or little sister, and, and, and you, they go into the kitchen area, and they're ready to reach up and get a pot of hot boiling water. And you stand there, and you just go, no! And you hit their hand down so that, it doesn't, so that they don't get burned. And, you know, I mean, oh, my goodness. Um, Yes, there's impending danger. And you stopped it with, with, with a no and a smack. And then you realized, oh, I hit my brother. I hit my sister. And, and mom and dad told me, don't hit your brothers and your sisters. Don't hit them. And here you did, you hit them. Oh, no. Am I going to get in trouble for hitting them? I, I just did it because I didn't want to get her. I did it because I loved them. Well, that's a tough one, isn't it? Um, what Jesus is doing, I mean, we don't get to hit people at church. <laughs> we don't get to smack people and say, no, you're heading down the wrong path and hit them upside the head. We don't get to do that. <laughs> uh, and what Jesus wants us to do is, is to first off, when you see, when we see someone who is on a path that is destructive or, or leading to danger, and, and we warn them, how do we warn them? How do we go about it? And Jesus provides a way uh, of helping us um, restore one to a right path, a good path, a path that is productive, one that is not dangerous and going to bring harm into anybody's life. Um, Jesus is, is providing uh, that opportunity for us as in our lesson today with a, with a very methodical, systematic approach. But at the very core of that is that Jesus wants our words to still reflect his love and his grace. Um, it's sort of like going back to the, your young sister or brother at the stove. I know instinctually you yell no and hit. And that's the way of the world, isn't it? Jesus is trying to give us a way of, of rather than yelling and hitting, we embrace. What if you were just to grab your brother and sister and say, Oh, I love you. Do not do this. This will hurt you. It's a different way of doing the same thing, huh? Pre setting them on a better path, keeping them out of danger. And that's what Jesus is trying to do for us in our lesson this day. And so, um, with that we pray. Gracious Lord Jesus, we thank you for giving us ways and means of living a life rooted in your love and your grace for us and for all people. And may our words and our actions come from that place of love and grace so that we may um, help those around us and help ourselves walk in ways that are healthy and good and don't lead to danger and harm and pain and suffering. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you later. God bless you.
Please join with me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty Lord, we thank you for this word that has been given to us this day. And as we consider it now in this message, uh, may the meditations on our hearts and on our minds be pleasing and acceptable in your gracious sight. And may the words that come forth from my mouth be your words through Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is the risen Christ of God. Amen. Um, I did want to read this to you first. Um, Mount Zion is committed to connecting people to the person, power, and authority of Christ Jesus, our Lord. We do this by offering ourselves, our time, and our resources in Christ-centered programs, events, and worship. Those words sound familiar? Huh? Do you want me to repeat them? I'll repeat them one more time for you, just in case. You say, I think I know what those words are. Here we go. Mount Zion is committed to connecting people to the person, power, and authority of Jesus Christ, the Lord. We do this by offering ourselves, our time, our resources, in Christ-centered programs, events, and worship. That is, happens to be the purpose statement of this congregation. This is why we exist. This is what we do. It's the purpose statement that we are committed. We are committed to connecting people to the person and to the power and to the authority of the risen Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. It's a pretty lofty idea, isn't it? It's a pretty lofty purpose. It's one that uh, I think each and every one of us takes to heart. Um, that we exist to help the Lord as faithful witnesses to connect people to our Lord. Pretty simple, isn't it? For some people um, with their past histories, the notion of someone in a church a community of faithful in Christ, um, because their past histories have experienced uh, a community that is not healthy, um, things that occur in that community that is called a congregation, the Church of Jesus Christ, do not reflect that, uh, which truly is of Christ. Um, and they have uh, eyes and ears that are very defensive, very sensitive. Um, sometimes they don't want to hear about Jesus and, and being connected to our Lord. Um, in my faith journey, um, I once held that notion. I once held the notion. Um, I, I really did. Uh, when I went to college, uh, at, at California Luther. Uh, those um, people I, I uh, initially hung out with in my major, uh, which was pre-seminary, um, um, how do I put this? Uh, I was in such a spot, a, a place that um, I did not feel that their presence was a welcoming, healing, reconciling, redeeming presence. Um, I saw and experienced and felt as if these folks around me were two-faced, backstabbing, hypocritical, better and holier than thou, casting judgment and dispersions upon me and my life. And yes, I was struggling. I was at a tough plot place in my life. I was making a transition in my life that was very difficult to make. And all I heard was judgment, law. You need to do this, you need to do that. You better do this, you better do, what are you doing here? What about, blah, 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 blah. You need to change, you need to, and, and all these things that did not offer any help. And I left the church. I didn't want anything to do with this backstabbing, hypocritical, holier than thou, up on the pedestal, casting judgment upon me types of people 
I had, didn't want anything to do with that. Didn't seem very Christ-like to me. And again, I, I, you know, that's how I perceived it, whether that's accurate or not. Um, like I said, I was in a place in my life where I was struggling. Um, but I, 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 again, at the same point, um, these are things that uh, I remember words that were very painful and hurtful. Um, and that's not what a community should be about. A community in Christ Jesus should be all about. You may wonder, well, here you are now, <laughs> leading, leading a congregation <laughs> of faith in Christ Jesus. What brought you back to the church, Pastor Dan? Why did you come back? What drew you? First off, I say the Holy Spirit did not give up on me. Christ did not give up on me. But I will also uh, uh, say at the same time that it wasn't words of judgment and a tightening down on the following the Ten Commandments and the laws and the encouragement to do so from others that brought me back into the fold of of. of, of the household and kingdom of God, to live it accordingly, to be a leader within it. What brought me back was words of love, words of hope, words of healing, words of Christ. That's what brought me back. That's what reestablished me on a healthy and right path. Do I follow it perfectly? No. And despite that, I, I would maintain that as, as you do the same and I do the same, we are prone to wander. But it is by the power of Christ and His love and His grace that sets us on a right path. And we are faithful to that one and we live by faith even as we wander and stray at times. We are still faithful. Our gospel lesson for today sounds very mechanical, doesn't it? It's no guarantee, really. You know, you go talk to one one on one, then you bring two or three. You know, two, one or two of you go. Two or three of you go. Um, here's the next step. Here's the next step, and A plus B plus C equals D. That's not necessarily um, what this lesson is all about. If you can't, if you see someone who's who's really changed. Um, they used to act and behave this way and now they're sort of on another path it seems. And it's one that you discern as not only as a people, um, as a group, as close friends, you discern something's not right. And you address that matter one on one. When you find the time, to address it one on one. If words have come in from that person that caused you to wonder and, and hurt and it's a red flag, you speak to that person one on one. And here's one of the keys. <clears throat> it says, if, if that one will not listen. And yes, there are things that we hear in scripture that our ears may be plugged, our eyes may be dimmed. But also, on the other side, in community, there's, it is too involved. And, and where are your words coming from? What, what place are, in you are your words coming from? Yes, you may love that person, just like I was sharing with and care for that person. And, and just as I, as I was sharing <clears throat> with the kids, you, you may just want to knock that person, <laughs> throw some judgment on them. <laughs> Here's what's going to happen. If you continue, this is what's going to happen. Is that the best approach? 
cast words of judgment? I would maintain that probably, again, that which brought me back to the church are those words that are of love and grace. And that comes from a humble heart. At the beginning of chapter 18, which is, again, um, just 14 verses it's earlier, the intro is, 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 is that Jesus pulls a child in the midst of them after there's, there's been some complaining. And Jesus says at that point, whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. This, th these verses, our lesson today, are being built upon a humble heart. So that when you speak to one, or two or three of you speak to one, or as the congregation speaks, it's spoken out of a place of humility and humbleness. The cornerstone of our discipleship. I mean, that's, when you look at, at, at Scripture as a whole, here comes Jesus. We, we, in the season of Advent, we, we, we celebrate the coming, the arrival of Jesus as the infant and, and His second coming, when He comes in power and glory. But that second coming has not occurred yet. The first coming, Jesus enters this world as a humble helpless child that's God's doing that's God's choosing he does not come in the, the, the glory of the clouds and all people recognize he comes in as a humble child and that's one of the cornerstones of who we are humility and humbleness of Christ that humbleness and humility actually brings him to the cross. There's confidence in that. There's a confidence in that, that Jesus knows he will be raised. So he's conducted himself in humbleness and humility. And when we are a community of faith, when we are in congregation, the Lord stirs these incredible gifts, these eternal gifts, these gifts that are of the kingdom of God, in the realm of God. And one of them is humbleness and humility. This is not something that is of human nature. This is something that is of God. And to conduct ourselves when things are not right, in the midst of sin, in the midst of brokenness, and we are all there. We treat our neighbors as we would like ourselves to be treated. Would you prefer to be reprimanded in a, a loving, gracious, humble way? Or would you like the ruler to come smack you down with words of judgment? Which one's going to restore you? The, 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 the par there's a parable just before our lesson. In, in, in Matthew, this is the one where Jesus leaves the 99 to go get the one. He wants that community restored. He loves so much. He, he goes after one. And he doesn't smack that one down. He grabs, embraces, holds, holds that little one and brings them back and restores. And this is what Jesus is providing for us this day. So that we may conduct ourselves that, that in a manner that is Christ-like. Because Christ has given us that. He is at work constantly in us, sanctifying us, making us more Christ-like in our ways, in our minds, the way we think, the way we conduct ourselves. This is what Christ has done for you and Christ has done for me. So when we gather as congregation in Christ, May those gifts, those Christ-like gifts, 
When sin and brokenness is in the midst of the congregation, let us deal with it in a manner that is Christ-like. Otherwise, why have Christ at all? If we're going to conduct ourselves as a congregation in the ways of the world, what good is that? But we have congregation here so that we may rehearse and practice and live out the, the, the way Christ would conduct himself. And he's empowered you and me to do the same. And as a matter of fact, he's promised to do even greater things. May the gifts of our Lord continually stir and overwhelm us in such a way that our, our, our words and our deeds are Christ-like this day and always. Amen. May we now join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as humankind, we miss the mark. As disciples, we are prone to wander. In your kingdom, you are at work restoring all things. And we are certainly a living in that kingdom. Restore us, Lord, through faithfulness and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, in congregations around the world and throughout this new age, congregations err. People make unhealthy decisions and choices that impact the whole. Keep our hearts humble that we may come to you, knowing you are faithful and can bring new life from ashes. And may we be faithful in our journey of and in being restored by your eternal hand of love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, stir in us the humbleness and trust of one of these little ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we carry many people in our hearts and minds who suffer illness, brokenness, and disease. We pray that you restore those who are in need of healing by bringing their hearts and minds to confidently know that you are always at work in the faithful. Use us, Lord, to be instruments of restoring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we walk in the hope of complete restoration, which comes to those who walk in faith. We pray this day for Irvin Claywitter in the passing of his wife, Pat. Be with the family and stir your promises within each of them that they may find hope and consolation in this time of grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these petitions and the prayers in our hearts and minds we place in your hands, O Lord. May we trust that you take these petitions and prayers and may your will be done. In your most precious name we pray. Amen. It is in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed that he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. We now partake in the body of Christ. Then after the supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. We now partake in the blood of Christ. And now may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ continue to strengthen us and keep us in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Let us now join together in the Lord's Prayer. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us go now in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.